welcome back to my channel. I am feeling like I haven't done any video for ages so it's kind of true you might feel like that you have just uploaded a few days back but it's kind of true because those are pre-recorded so I did my last video almost more than a week back so I'm feeling like I haven't filmed for ages so I might look a little bit weird and I might talk a little bit weird you know sometimes when you don't film for a while you get you know it's hard to talk sometimes. Anyway, so today's video is a bit different one. So today I'm going to talk about the products I really regret buying over the years. So honestly speaking guys, this is my third time doing this video. First time I did, I think one or two months back, but I accidentally deleted few of the clips so I couldn't upload that one. That was so frustrating. And then next time I did that video again but something happened with the focus or anything so that didn't work and um, this is my third time and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed because this is a cursed video whenever I try to do this video something happens I don't know so today I'm gonna talk about the products I really did get buying over the years I just want to put a little disclaimer because you might think that all of the products I'm gonna mention are really bad but it's not the case maybe some of them just didn't work for my skin or maybe that that is a good product but that just didn't work for my skin tone maybe that might work for you but um, that just didn't work for me and some of them I bought maybe whimsically or maybe I thought like that would be good but I could have just keep them so not necessarily they are all bad but they just didn't work for me if that makes sense so um, until making it too long let's jump into those products the first one I want to mention is this Laura Mercier cream smooth foundation I I think I got it um, a year and a half back. Uh, Lisa Elvis, she mentioned it that she used to use it on her models. So I really got intrigued by that and I got this one. But this is a very thick foundation. It's pretty expensive. It's around like $50. So I really feel bad that I cannot use it. Uh, this is as you can see like it's very very thick so it doesn't move so she mentioned that it gives a flawless finish and at that time I was really into full coverage foundation so I got this one there is something in this foundation that just doesn't work for me I don't know maybe I have dry skin that's why it doesn't work for me because it just sits on my face it doesn't blend at all I try with beauty blender brush or all the stuff you can think of but um, it just doesn't work for me it just settles on my you know dry patches and it looks weird and also the shade I messed it at store so I messed it at Nordstrom store but the shade is on the neutral side so I have visible yellow undertone also the shade doesn't work so sometimes you know I also tried it to mix it with the liquid foundations like MAC face and body or other um, water based foundation just to make it a little bit lighter so that I can use uh, but still the same result I feel bad because this is like $50 and I cannot use it so that's the waste Next is another foundation. This one, I know lots of people love this foundation. This one is the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation. The same thing, maybe my dry skin, you know, it's not suitable for full coverage foundation. But um, again, the same stuff. It's not that bad as the Laura Mercier one, but still it doesn't look uh, good on my skin. What should I say? Like, it, it's like, it looks like I have mask on. So it's a good foundation. I think like um, if you have oily skin or normal skin, you might love this foundation because this is very full coverage, I must agree. But on my dry skin, it doesn't work. Next is an eyeshadow palette. This one is the Tarte Foam Natural Palette, I guess. So I got it from Tarte's website. At that time, I felt like the packaging is really cute because of this flower, but this is not as choice friendly at all. And um, I was mostly drawn into this um, warm reddish brown color. If you are, you know, familiar with my channel, you know that I have a little obsession on this uh, reddish brown or orange color. So. I was really drawn into this color but when the when I got this palette in hand I have never ended up using it so as you can see it is almost new I could have skipped this one I will not say this is a bad palette this is um this is a good one like the shadow quality is nice but um I don't think like um uh, I need it because the colors are not so different like I have them in my other palettes as well so I could have just skipped this palette and the shadow quality is good, but I could have just skipped it. 
Then my another regret is this eyeshadow palette. This one is the Sigma Resort palette from last year's summer collection, I believe. This, so this was limited edition. This was all over YouTube at that time. So um, I, I felt like I need this palette in my life. So for all those fun colors and everyone was doing tutorial on that. Um, you know, that happens, right? Sometimes you feel like, like you have to get it in your life. So I got it and I have never ended up using it. I like this color Topaz, but the shadow quality is not over the moon. Like, it is good, but this was pretty expensive. This was like around 50 or 55 bucks, so I cannot justify the price, and um, the shadow quality is okay, but it's not that good. Sometimes eh, for Sigma, it's hard to get the honest opinion on YouTube because everybody uses those, everybody has coupon code. So it's hard to get an honest review on Sigma stuff. So um, I, I thought at that time that it is a really good palette. I'm not saying it is a bad palette, but it's it was expensive and I don't know, it's okay. So I could have just skipped this one. Anyways, next is a bronzer and this one is the Balm Bahama Bama bronzer. I know lots of people love this bronzer, but for some reason it just didn't work for my skin. Um, I found that it is too muddy on my skin. Every time I try to blend it, no matter with what any brush I use, it looks muddy on my skin. And I think like when I first got it, I thought like it will be a great shade for contouring on my skin tone, but it is way too dark and since it doesn't blend well, it looks very dark and muddy. I don't know, on my skin tone it's so dark, so for lighter skin tone, I don't know how they make it work, but it just didn't work for me. It's too muddy and too dark. At the same time, I think I got another uh, balm product. This one is the Sexy Mama powder. So when I got this one, I thought like I will use it to set my under eye concealer because this one has a little bit color as well, so it will work as, uh, you know, as a highlighting powder. So I got this one, but I ended up never using it because it, it set us on my fine line and it looks really cakey under my eyes. So instead of, you know, blending your concealer, it rather sits there and it looks really odd. So I really, really regret buying this one. The next one is the one, if I mention this one, I'll probably be banished from the beauty world, but what can I say? It just didn't work for me. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. So I'm not saying that the product itself is bad. The individual powders are really great, like the quality of those powders are really great, but I just don't like this palette because the colors, um, they didn't work for me. The dim light, it's okay, but I put it all over my face sometimes, but it it doesn't do that much on my skin tone so maybe I could have gone for the diffuse light which is a little bit lighter and that could give me a highlighting effect under my eyes the incandescent light it is it is a highlighter but for my skin tone it doesn't show up that much so I cannot use it like if even if I use it it doesn't show up that much and the radiant light I cannot use it as a bronzer because it is way too light as a bronzer I cannot use it all over my face because it is darker than my skin tone so I don't know what to do with this powder so when I bought this palette I thought like I'm getting three powder these are individually $44 so this is a steal but um, I ended up not using them because the shades didn't work for me so don't get me wrong that the palette itself is good but I just feel like you know you can just buy one single powder but um, you can get a better matching for your skin tone rather than getting this all three shades and never end up get using them. So from that perspective, you know, I really do get buying this palette. But don't get me wrong, the uh, product itself is really good. Like the quality of the powders, they're really good. But the shades, they didn't work for me. Next, I have another eyeshadow palette from Balm. I am mentioning lots of regrets from, uh, from this brand, but you might think that the brand is bad, but the brand is really good. But for some reason, I have lots of regrets from them. Like maybe the products I picked up, most of them, you know, I didn't pick, uh, do my research before picking them up. So uh, this is their Nude Tooth palette. I'm not saying the palette itself is bad. It's a great neutral palette with some darker color as well, but um, I have never ended up using them. I found that the shadows are not, you know, so unique. So you can find them easily, like any do for them. And the shadow quality is okay, but they are not over the moon. So I have never ended up using them. This is not too expensive, but since I don't use them at all, so I feel, you know, 
I could have just skipped them. So if you like neutral palettes and if you like bomb, maybe you might like this palette, but it just didn't work for me. Next are a few sleek palettes. Um, I cannot get sleek products here in US easily. So when I got this one, I felt like I have to get everything. So I ordered a lot of things. So these four palettes and some other stuff I got at a time because they charge crazy shipping in US. So I thought like this is a one time purchase. I have to get everything. Some of the palettes, those are okay, but some I really regret buying. Like, I don't know why on earth I got this primer palette. Let me find that one. Where is that? So here is it. At that time, I felt like this is full of all those cream colors, so I can use it as a base underneath my eyeshadows, but these cream eyeshadows, they suck. Like, I don't know why on earth I thought like this would be good. It doesn't work as itself or underneath your eyeshadows, so I couldn't make them work. So now they are almost dry. Oh my god. I really do get buying this one. So this this cream eyeshadows from Sleek. The eyeshadow, the powder eyeshadows are really good, but this cream one, this really suck. The other threes are a strong palette, original palette, and the also oh special palette. Um, these are okay, the also oh special and the um, strong palette. Those are okay, but I could have just skipped those ones because um, I don't need them. I found them a little bit powdery, so when you work on them. So I could have just skipped them. And the original palette, um, I really hate that one. Where is that? So here is the original palette. I don't like the shadow quality on this palette. I know people like them a lot, but uh, that's why I got them. But uh, I don't know. I know they are not that expensive, but I bought a lot, so I really did get buying them. Last is a brush, and this one is the Sedona Less um, Stippling Brush. I don't know, I couldn't make this brush work. I like stippling brushes, but this one especially it has so long bristles and this is like, I don't know, something is there with this brush that I cannot make it work. It doesn't work to apply foundation, neither to apply any blush or highlighter, so I don't know how I can make it work because the bristles are way too soft, like, you know, as you can see, like it bends. So you cannot apply foundation with that and it doesn't blend at all like especially for foundation it leaves the streak mark so um, i don't know i really regret buying this brush it doesn't work um stippling brushes are great like the even the elf stippling brush is better than this one so guys that's it that's all my regret list thank god the list is not too long because I do my research before buying any product but sometimes you know you do some whimsical buy and sometimes some products just don't work for your skin. So that happened when I bought this foundation, this one and the Laura Mercier one. I thought like these products would be really great for my skin but they just didn't work for me. So that happens right? Um, no matter how much research you do before buying any product, sometimes you end up um, getting some products that just don't work for you or sometimes you get some crap products uh, so like this one uh, the palettes and the Bahama Mama bronzer so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up I'll get back to you soon with more videos till then stay well bye bye